Okay, I'm back. I, I, um, I don't know what to, to blame this on other than my own incompetence probably, but um, I was having trouble in, uh, getting these uh, black magic devices to be detected by the computer again. OBS really has been very kind to me and has had no problems. <laughs> so hopefully this isn't gonna be end. And I forgot what I was talking about. Anybody remember the last thing that I said? Oh no, crashed. Oh my God. Oh, no, but I'm back. Whoa. Okay, that was like a, a momentary hiccup. Um, whoa. Oh, and OBS is now like showing me a video of myself from a moment ago. It's like behind. Uh, how can I fix that? I wonder if this goes. That's so weird. All right, as long as people can hear and see me, I'm gonna just keep going. Can you hear and see me? Is, the, is everything like out of sync in a weird way? Does anybody know what I was last saying? Oh, I don't have the live chat up. Uh, let me go to here, see if this is actually working. Um, okay, um, I now have the live chat. I don't see anybody saying that they're seeing me and it's working. It is back. Hi, Dan, and chat. Can somebody in the Slack channel tell me if um, things are okay? So I don't want to go unless I know things are working. I think you guys are seeing me. It is working. Okay, great. I think, I think you might be way behind real time like a minute behind, because that took a really long time for people to say it's working, but it is working, okay. All right, um, all right, I, this, it's driving me crazy that what I'm seeing on my monitor is like behind real time, but I'm gonna have to just live with that. Oh, 5.45, okay, we're gonna do simple harmonic motion. Um. Oh, oh. Audio is out of sync, very out of sync. Hold on. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay. Okay, I think I fixed the out of sync problem. <laughs> I hope. Let's see how bad the syncing is. I need something to clap along to. How bad is the audio sync now? <laughs> Fixed. Okay. I'm going to drink some water. I really need another coffee, but it's not going to happen or like some sort of like sugar snack. I hope it doesn't freeze again. Yeah, I know about the uh, audio uh, offset. I've already actually um, set the offset. Is the, is the sync oak, is it, it's pretty much okay though now, right? Now it's fine. Okay, great. Let's do this. Let's keep going. I don't know which. I'm gonna just play all these. Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. This is gonna be a pretty simple one and I'm curious to see what types of beautiful experiments people who watch this video will create after this video. And if you've been wondering about the sine function and the cosine function and how to use those functions for a motion in code, then you're in the right place. So this video is inspired by um, 
This tutorial is inspired by the artist Memo Acton, who created a series of works about simple harmonic motion. You can see here, this, this, uh, and these are actually all uh, sound pieces, so I encourage you to actually check them out and um, check, check them out and actually listen to the sound. But you can see each one of these circles is moving back and forth evenly, but they're all offset from each other. And this is kind of what I want to do in this video is in a really simple way, just have one of these moving back and forth. And what can you create from that? And if I scroll, you can see some of these other uh, examples. Uh, simple harmonic motion number two. You can see this is the same idea, but with a more thoughtful and sophisticated visual design. Uh, here's another one that's moved into 3D. Simple harmonic motion. So things you might try to create is a guitar string plucking. How could you create the simulation of a guitar string that's plucked? Or how could you create a simulation of a pendulum swinging? Um, what, what about a fish swimming or an eel moving through the water? Uh, here's uh, number five. So I would love to show you all of these, but I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna put a link to this page in this video's description, and hopefully you'll create something. <laughs> I just burped in the middle of my video. Um, also, something is driving me crazy the way I, I have. I gotta hit this lock button, sorry. Oh, no, whoops. This is gonna have to be an edit point here. Okay. Um. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to be a terrible edit for poor Mathieu. Um, hopefully you'll create something uh, creative, you'll look at these, you'll be inspired, and uh, use the sign function in your code with simple harmonic motion. Okay, uh, let's, keep, let's write some code. Please edit this part out too. <laughs> while I'm trying to find the editor. Today was going so well. It was a day where there were no weird crashing and that's all gone now. Um, I think I kinda want us to start this whole video over. I'm gonna start this whole thing over. It's gonna torture those of you watching this live, but it's gonna be good for the long run. For the world. Flatten the green paper on the second laptop. That's probably better, right? Okay. Let's try this again. Hello, welcome to a coding challenge where I'm gonna make something very simple for the beginner, just a simulation of simple harmonic motion. And this coding challenge is inspired by the artist Memo Acton, who has a series of works about simple harmonic motion. You can see here their musical works, this idea of a simple oscillation back and forth. So think of a guitar string plucking and, or a pendulum swinging. And I encourage you to check out all of these beautiful, this is one of my favorite ones, which is uh, sort of a, a mock-up for a, a live performance of just this idea of a simple oscillation up and down. And what happens when there are many of these next to each other? What types of patterns can you create? And so just even going down further through these, I encourage you to check out all of these. But here's one where we can see really, really simply just this idea of easing in, easing out, easing in, easing out, a wave, so to speak a sine wave. So you might have seen in P5 or in processing or other things that there's a sine function and a cosine function. What do those functions do and how can you apply those functions to motion or color or any other parameters that might be in your system? That's what I'm going to do in this particular video. Okay, uh, so now there's going to be a little edit point because I'm rethinking. I'm going to drink some water. I think that was better because it was shorter and As I just realized that what I need to do, unfortunately, is, oops, my keyboard shortcut stopped working. Hold on. Uh, settings, hotkeys, uh, switch to scene one. 
whiteboard switch to scene two. Where do I have to click for those to work? Ah, okay. So I need to erase the, um, this whiteboard. So, you guys don't mind bearing with me here. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I forgot. I wanted to do a draggable shape coding challenge because that's actually a weirdly tricky thing to do. And then I was going to, when I teach classes in ES6, I was going to turn it into an object, but make many of them. But I don't know if I'll have time for that. That was another thing on my list. Oh, and the Wikipedia API. There's so many things to get to. Uh, need more time in the day and in the live stream, whatever it is. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what it is I'm going to use. So in P5 or in processing, and of course actually in JavaScript in the, in the math package, there are functions called sine, S-I-N, cosine, C-O-S. These are trigonometry functions. They perform a, uh, they're trigonometry functions. They relate to triangles. A triangle, a right, uh, they, <laughs> let me try that again. I, uh, I really shouldn't be allowed to, uh, to start over so many times. <laughs> so before I start coding, let's talk about the functions that are available in P5, also in processing. They're just actually part of most programming uh, environments called sine, S-I-N for short, cosine, C-O-S for short. These are trigonometry functions, trigonometry being the study of the relationship between the sides of a right triangle and the angles of a right triangle. So there's an angle here, there's an there's a opposite side here, there's an adjacent to that angle side here, and there's a hypotenuse. So I have some videos from my Nature of Code series that go through the math behind this in more detail and look at actually a whole bunch of different scenarios for simulating pendulums and various things. So I'll link to those in this video, but I'm actually not even gonna worry about trigonometry in this video. The reason why I wanna use the sine function is if I pass a number, if we think of this number like as the x-axis, any number I pass to the sine function as an argument to the sine function will give me a value between plus one and negative one. And if that number, if I increase that number over time, you can almost think of it as time or along the x-axis, that number will, the, the, the output of that function will oscillate smoothly between one and negative one. And it will move most quickly in the middle and it will slow down as it gets to the bottom. And so ease in and ease out. The sine function has a natural easing in and easing out. If I were to graph that, it's gonna look like this. Incidentally, if you look at my videos about synthesizing sound with the P5JS libraries, you also use a sine wave to generate a tone. Um, and there's different kinds of waves, and there's a lot to this. But this is the basic idea. Cosine is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is cosine of zero is one. Cosine of zero is zero. So it's just starting in a different place, a slight offset. But we just want the wave quality. So for what I'm doing, you, I could use sine or cosine interchangeably. Obviously, those mathematical functions have you know, scenarios where it's important which one you're picking. In this case, this is not one of them. Okay, so let's see what happens when we add this into our code. I'm just looking at the chat. Sokotoa, yeah, that's a good, uh, okay. <laughs> Let me come back. <laughs> Do that again. All right, so I have a simple sketch uh, with nothing in it. I'm gonna say create canvas to give myself a canvas, 400, 400. I'm gonna add a draw function so that I can have a nice animation. Again, this is all how the P5 library works. The other there's other ways to code in the universe. Uh, and I'm going to say background uh, zero. And I'm just going to say fill uh, 255. And I'm going to draw a circle in the middle of the window just to get something on the screen that I can take a look at. And now I'm going to come over here and close this. I'm going to hit refresh. There we go. I have my beautiful this is <laughs> coding challenge complete. The circle. But I'm gonna keep going. So what do I wanna do? I want to have a variable, and I'm now using let to declare my variables. I just made a video about why. Uh, I'm gonna say let, uh, and actually, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm actually gonna make it a local variable to draw. I'm gonna say let x 
equal 200, and I'm going to put x in here instead. And I should still have the same result. Excellent. Okay, so I'm just little steps here. Now, what do I want to do? What I actually want to do is instead of having x be a hard-coded value, I want to have it be the result of the sine function. So what do I put inside that sine function? Well, if we think about this, what I want is a smoothly oscillating number. So I need to pass something to the sine function that moves along through time, through the x-axis, a different value. So let me come back over here. So I, want, I need to introduce something. I'm going to call it an angle. So I'm going to say at the top, let angle equal 0. And I'm going to say sine of angle. So let x equal sine of angle. And now I'm going to look at this sketch. And look at this. Now the circle is over there at the zero pixel because sine of zero is zero. What happens if I were to now increase that angle? So I want to say angle equals angle plus one because if any value that goes into sine is going to give me something between negative one and one, if I increase that value over time, I'm going to get that smooth oscillation. So let's look at this now. Oh look, there's that smooth oscillation. <laughs> Here's the thing, why is it over there? Well, if you remember, the sine function just gives me a value between negative one and one. And now here's the essential question. You are going to do something creative with this. I've actually given you everything you need to know. The question now is what's the context? What am I drawing? What's my animation? What's my idea? And what are the ranges of values that I want? So I'm gonna keep this very simple. And I am going to just say, I want this to oscillate left and right. So what I need to do is take that range, negative one to one, and map it. And I do have a video about the map function, but the map function, and let's, let's, do, let's, let's do this in two steps. So I'm gonna say let s be the result of sine of angle, and I'm gonna say let x equal map that value, which has a range between negative one and one, and give it a range between zero and 400. And I'm going to say width here instead of 400 in case I change the side of the canvas. Now this math that map is doing isn't that hard. It's just taking that s, the value which has that range, and giving it a different range. I could do this myself if you're curious, right? I could say let x equal s times 200 plus 200, right? Because if s is negative 1, two, negative 200 plus 200 is 0. If x is 1, if s is 1, 200 plus 200 is 400. So this would be the math of mapping that range, but in case things get more complicated later and the map function is just so convenient to do this for us. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that. So look at it, it's just like, it's doing that oscillation, but it's so fast. So this is really what I have to think about. How fast am I moving through that oscillation? And this is, relates to the idea of frequency or period. And again, you can check some of my Nature of Code tutorials where I go through that in a bit more detail. But right now, we can just understand it as if I increase angle faster, I'm going to get a faster oscillation. If I increase it more slowly, I'm going to get a slower oscillation. So now what I'm going to do, and let's make that circle a little bit bigger. Let's make it 48. Let's increase the angle. I said angle is angle plus one, which sort of makes sense if I were thinking in terms of degrees, like zero degrees, one degrees, two degrees. But actually, the native unit of measurement is something called radians, which has a zero to 360 degrees is zero to two pi radians, which I've talked about in many videos probably. So I'm going to say 0 0.1. And now we have, look at that. It's almost as if it's a swinging pendulum. Now it's moving along a straight line. So it's not moving up and down as it's swinging. But you can see this is that nice easing in. Easing in, easing out, easing out, easing out, easing in, easing out, easing in, easing out, easing in. It's very hard to say that while it's going. If my audio is out of sync, this is going to be a disaster. So what more can I do with this? So now I have to think, uh, what should I do with this now? Um, this is the idea of simple harmonic motion. Um, and so I could add two of these, could draw it in a different way. I could, what I might like to do is like make it the middle point of like a curve. I'm um, looking for ideas because maybe I should take, this is the end of the challenge in some ways, make more with different frequencies. That's a good idea. Uh, pendulum, I don't want to do the full pendulum because <laughs> that's kind of involved. Yeah, the speed and range. Um, that's a good idea. Oh. Camera went out. So 
I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it feel like a spring. Draw a line and draw a wave. Yeah, I, like, I kind of like that idea. I want to be able to see uh, uh, the history, put a color, put it on a curve. Oh, you guys have so many. Make it rotate in a circle, add a Y component. Ah, too many good. That's the whole point. The point of this is to have you guys do all of these things. Make it size change. Ooh, I like that. Okay, okay. Everybody, hold on. So there are so many next steps I could take with this. I could put a whole bunch of them here. I could have them all kind of moving back and forth at slightly different rates. I could have its color oscillate. I could have its size oscillate to make it feel like it's breathing. There's so many possibilities and people are just writing ideas, writing ideas in the live chat right now. So I encourage you in some ways just to pause this video right now and go try some of these ideas out. What I'm gonna, let me try to do a few things a little more. One thing that I think would be interesting to try is can I make this feel like a spring? So that it's kind of oscillating, but it oscillates. All right, am I back? What's the chance that I'm back? I think I, think I should be back. This first person who sees that I'm back, please let me know in the chat. Did the slow chat, is it off? I mean, I've never seen so many chat messages in my life. Okay, yes, I'm back, okay. What was the last thing that I did? I mean, I was recording to disk, so hopefully the recording to disk still has it. Um, gosh, I really thought that OBS was gonna be, I, I kind of feel like the thing that I need to do is um, wipe the computer and re, just rebuild the computer, update everything. I'm looking. He just asked the viewer to pause. Oh, okay. All right, so I went on for quite a while after that, unfortunately. <laughs> so let me, let me undo my code. Whoops, nope. Okay. So I'm gonna move forward and try to just do one or two more things and ultimately I might even do another video because what I'd really like to do is uh, store the history of the oscillation. You can almost see like this wavy line thing but I need an array probably for that and I want this video to be simple with no array to start. So anyway, <laughs> let's see what I'm gonna do. So what, one, for a couple things. One is that's gonna make things easier. There's no reason for me to have such a tall canvas um, and uh, also I think things are gonna be simpler if I use translate to put the origin in the center of the canvas so that um, I can think of everything relative to the center. So you can see now it's actually oscillating off to the right because now what I can do is I can actually just say x is the value of sine times 200, right? Because I just want to, and I can even more simply say x equals sine of the angle times 200, right? Because I just want to oscillate between negative 200 and 200. So this is going to allow for more possibilities. So let's try this. Let's see, first of all, let's see if I can make this kind of like oscillate and slowly end up in the center, kind of like a spring might. So how would I do that? Well, I can, this could be a variable. This is known as the amplitude, right? This value 200, oops, sorry. This, ah. Uh, This value 200 is really like the top of the amplitude, the height of this curve. I mean, it's really 400 because it goes up to 200 and negative 200. But that aside, that's what that value is doing. So that could be something variable. So I'm going to call that amplitude. And I'm going to say let amplitude equal 200. Now what I'm going to do is have that amplitude shrink down to zero. And I'm going to use the lerp function. Now you might have to stop and go watch my lerp video if you haven't, don't know what that is, but that's for linear interpolation. Meaning it's a way for me to like move towards another value, interpolate towards another value by a percentage. So let's try having amplitude. I don't know, I'm just really making up stuff. To uh, interpolate to, a, to zero between itself and zero by uh, 10%. Boy, that was way too fast. 1%. Mm, uh, 
it's slowing down, but that's not really what a spring would do, right? I kind of want the speed of the oscillation to speed up, slow down. I don't know if I like this idea. Did I use var? No, no, I used let. I'm, I'm yelling too. Did you notice that I'm yelling? It's terrible. Hold on, I gotta think about what I'm doing here. Stop for a second. That's kind of interesting. Oh, I could have the amplitude oscillate. But yeah, that's probably what I should do to get some more interesting... Um, I, uh, um, I should just add the Y. <laughs> and I, Yeah, let me go back. Let me forget about that amp. So... Uh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, does it better actually like n just decrease the amplitude? I'm just curious now. Amplitude minus equal two. That's interesting. Then it goes up. Okay. I, I don't like that direction that I went. Well, the thing that I should do is add a y probably to get some interesting. Um, use exponent decay. <laughs> All these great suggestions. That's a really good idea. The linear interpolation wasn't really right because I, I, I'm not really doing it. I could do it like a spring simulation. But that's not really what this is. I like Alka's suggestion of, um, or I don't know, it's P5Dojo suggestion of using uh, X, X and Y, um, which is really, it should increase the speed of the sine wave in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's, this is actually interesting. Okay, so I don't know where this goes back to. Okay. I know, I know. Okay. So now, Mathieu, this is gonna be challenging, but I think you can find it. So now I have amplitude, but you know there's another variable in this system. That variable is this right here, point one. That actually relates to the frequency or the period. How, M is the wave oscillating really, really quickly, or is it oscillating really, really slowly? So if I can make that a variable, I'm also gonna have more things that I can play with. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make that a variable. I'm gonna call it, uh, let's just call it speed, just to be non-technical for a second. Let speed equals zero. So if I do this, it is not oscillating. Now, if I were to say something like speed, equals map the, the mouse x position, which goes between zero and width, to between like, you know, zero and 0.5. Right, we can see that is a fast oscillation, a faster oscillation, a slower, so I could slow down that oscillation and speed it up. So this is pretty interesting, just in of itself, like to be able to control that. So what kinds of things can you do to, if you control the amplitude and you control the speed? Let's try adding a y. And I'm going to say let y equals cosine of the angle times amplitude. This is going to be an interesting result here. <laughs> I'm going to take out this speed thing and just let it be a constant, 0.1. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to 400 by 400. And I'm going to draw this at y. So let's look at what this does. Now look at this. It's moving in a circle. Because if I oscillate along the x-axis and I oscillate along the y-axis at the same rate, offset by sine and cosine, I get exactly circular motion. Now, one thing I might like to do is give this a little alpha and not draw the background so I see the trail. And now what happens if I play with the angle here, so this, the x actually oscillates twice as fast as the y. Now we get this nice figure eight pattern. And I think there's a specific pattern, I'm gonna look this up, called Lisa Ju pattern. And I'm gonna Google image search, which looks like this. That's what I think of it as. This. Hold on, time out. <laughs> Let's look at what this, let's, Lisa Jew curve. Let's go to Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, it's, all right, hold on. And should I be able, is there like exact math? This is a Lisa Jew challenge, I just realized. 
Uh, oh, there's a good suggestion. Multiply sine by a value that increases over time and then map it again. Double helix. Wait, I want to, I mean, I could just sort of like estimate this, right? Top input signal, output signal. Um, so there's, oh, there's so much here. So, wow. Your is this, right? Oh yeah, it's just kind of generically the, uh, okay, okay, let me come back. Now by playing with the amplitudes and the speed of this oscillation in various ways, I can get a variety of different patterns. And this is essentially, what I'm essentially doing is the Lisa Ju curve, which somehow appeared as another tab if you were in, in an edit point there, which is really the graph of these equations. X equals sine of, of over time plus some offset, Y with some amplitude, Y equals sine of some value, um, by some other, other amplitude without the offset. So, and we can pick lots of different values for these constants. Oh, I, let's actually, let's put these, let's put, let's make these variables. So what do I have? I have an amplitude along the, the, the x-axis and an amplitude along the y-axis. We're gonna do this. this. This is now the Lisa Ju curve challenge. So I'm gonna say amplitude, I'm gonna say uh, A equals 200. Let B equals 200. Now I probably shouldn't be using capital letters. I kind of don't like that. A, amplitude A, and then I'm gonna say amplitude B, okay? So I'm gonna have two different amplitudes. X equals amplitude A times sine of the angle, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow the, um, and Y equals amplitude B times, and I'm gonna keep with sine, sine of the angle, okay? Okay, so now we're starting. Now let's see what we have here. Now if we look at this, we can see now I'm just perfectly oscillating back and forth along the axis. <laughs> uh, now let's go back to this formula and one of them should have an offset by offset delta. That's a delta, correct? So I'm going to say let delta and I'm going to call it offset equal, uh, I'm going to say offset equal um, and since we're in radian, let's, let's, let's actually have angle mode. I'm going to go to angle, I'm going to change angle mode to degrees. So I can just think in terms of degrees. And I'm going to have that offset be 90 degrees. And I'm going to have uh, plus delta. Y is plus the offset. Does, technically the X has the offset. Shouldn't really matter, but I'm going to add that delta in here. And then I'm also going to change the speed now that I'm in degrees to one. And let's take a look at this. And uncaught reference, delta is not defined. Oh, I called it L offset, <laughs> angle plus offset. And now look, we have that circle. We have it moving, and you know what, there's a stroke on it, which is why you're seeing this almost like moire, I can't say that word, moire pattern. So what I'm going to do is just turn, say no stroke. So we can see this nice fuzzy path. Okay, so now with that offset, now what do I need? I also need something to multiply, T is time, that's my angle. So alpha and beta being constant, and, um, so, and that's really, you can think of those as like frequencies or periods. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna call it uh, speed A equals one, speed B equal one. I'm gonna make the circle a little bit smaller, 24, 24, and I'm gonna say speed speed A times angle, and speed B times angle. Okay, now let's run this. And sorry, I'm in the wrong place. I still just have my thing moving in a circle. Time out for a second. I'm looking at the, all right, yes. Don't worry, everybody. I, I see what you're asking me. Now. Still moving in a circle. So now's the time that we can start to be a little bit crazy. So first of all, I could just try different values. Like, okay, let's, let me go up here and try 
a, a, an amplitude B of just 100 and a speed B of, of, of 4.3. What pattern do I get now? Well, this is kind of interesting. Uh, and I'd have to, it looks actually like a sine wave, but now it's coming back and it's oscillating. So what kind of patterns can I get? Try lots of different values. Maybe I could make a whole interface where I could change the values over time. I could also have color and size oscillating or that sort of thing. So, um, oh, and um, uh, Kai, Ger uh, Kai Germany in the chat is making a good suggestion, which is that I could also consider having a background with a little bit of transparency. So like over time, um, I'm actually seeing the full, and, and maybe then, now this is a little bit of an aside here, but I can give the fill no trend, you know, that, uh, and I'm gonna, I wanna make it like very, very little transparency so that it's kind of like, and I should say background zero and set up so that I can see kind of over time that path, but it's also gonna fade out over time so I see the current stuff more bright. So there's a lot of, number one, there's a lot of visual stuff that I could add to this. Uh, a bug, change speed to speed A and speed B. Where did I do that? Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness. No, 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 it's just fine. So this speed, whoa, why is this working? That's crazy. Oh no, there's still a speed up here. So this is different now. I probably, I, I did some sort of terrible variable naming. So I, these probably shouldn't be called, I just didn't want to say alpha because that's the name of a, uh, but I mean, that's not the name of anything, alpha and beta, it's not syntax highlighting. So, um, but maybe that's not a function. I was worried about overriding something else called alpha. So anyway, I probably should have better variable names. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so I'm taking suggestions now, time out for a second for things I could add to this. Uh, can you change the color of the ball depending on its speed? Yeah, change speed to rate, thank you. So a great suggestion just came into the chat that why don't I change this to, uh, I'm just gonna change this to rate. So that's kind of the global rate of everything and these are, these are altering the, the rate of each individual angle. So like if I wanted the whole thing just to be able to move a lot faster, I'm gonna change this rate to five. And let's run this again. Of course now there's more space in between and that, you know, so uh, there's a lot to sort of work on here in terms of how it's working visually, but um, and this is probably good enough. So, okay, so I could add sliders to adjust it in real time. That's a great suggestion. I hope that some of you will do that suggestion. I could add, I could start playing with color. Um, one thing that I think would be interesting though is to think about these parameters as variables that change. So even crazily, absurdly, what if I kind of almost recursively oscillate one of those. So what if I say the speed is the result of sine of the angle, which goes between negative one and one and map that speed to between one and five. So now, you know, that is also, that speed itself is oscillating. <laughs> and you can see, whoa, it's kind of, kind of spinning out of control. Um, and maybe I want to uh, kind of say something like more like between 0.1 and 2, and then I could say speed B is between you know, 2 and 0.1 in the opposite direction, and now I don't know what kind of crazy pattern I'm gonna have, I could never expect what it is, but you can see those things can in themselves be variables, and this kind of motion that it's doing is almost insane and, I, and, and unpredictable. But I assume that most of you can come up with more clever ways to think about this. And th the fact that I have the, the amplitude of one of those being between 100 is a little bit silly. I might as well fill the, the full screen, the full window. Um, and I can make this one cosine. Let's just try this. I'm surprised that it started going so crazy. Um, let's try some other values. Um, and what do I wanna do? I wanna change that amplitude to 200. All right, let's take a look at this. Let's see what I, this is my, this is my Frankenstein crazy Lisa Jew curve. So I've gone on for too long. You see the idea here. Um, Alka is making one really good suggestion in the chat, which I'm going to try. I don't, uh, I don't like the way this is turned. I should really plan these. <laughs> Why is this so... I wouldn't expect it to go so, maybe that's what, 
Yeah. So this is better. All right, hold on. So let me actually change. I think it's, the speed is, is almost getting, is, is being allowed to be too much. So I'm going to change this to go to 0 to 1. Uh, and actually, I could make this rate 1, and that's what I meant to do, and have this go between 0.1 and 2. And now let's see what this pattern looks like. And now I'm going to add some color. So let's try to oscillate color uh, and say something like fill, a red value, a green value, and you know, let's do a red value, uh, 50, and a green value. And I'm going to say let r equal, and again, I could have values for all of these. So I'm just going to tie it to, I'm going to, let me use map. So you know, I could use map, I could use multiply. I'm going to map sign of the angle between negative 1 and 1 to between 0 and 255. And I'm going to take a B here, which is for the blue value, and do cosine. And now we can see I'm going to get some nice oscillating color as it oscillates. And none of these things are synced, but this is, these are all the possibilities. I could change the size. So I encourage you, if you watch this, if you learned anything from this, try to make your own version of this. Maybe you can come up with some actual concept or design idea that informs what it is you're creating with this type of motion. Okay, thanks very much for watching this coding challenge. This is where I ended up. It's pretty ugly and weird. And I hope that after you watch this, you will come up with something quite beautiful. Uh, why does it keep speeding up over time? What am I doing that it's doing that? This is not the end. First of all, H HSB, like, right? What am I doing that it's speeding up over time? Did I do something to the amplitude, which I didn't realize? Right, this is just multiplied by the angle a different amount. The angle is going up at a constant rate. Oh, I should really, um, I should start using const. What time is it? It's like 6.30. This has not been my finest live stream. I seem to be saying that a lot. Right? I have to fix this. Speed equals temp. Somebody help me out here. Why? Let's try to understand this. Why is it moving nice and slow? And then over time, it's just faster and faster and faster. Because shouldn't this... This is multiplying by the angle there. Map, cosine. Check the variables in the console. Thank you. Why the console is like a really useful. So let me log these. Let me log. Let's fix this. Let's, let's come back and make this better. Right? This should go up to 2. Then it should come back down. I think the issue to 2, come all the way back down. Is it going to go all the way to point 0.1? Yeah. Okay, so the values are doing what I expect. But the behavior is not. And we can just make sure that there's no reason to think that speed b would be doing anything wrong. Whoops. That's fine, too. Uh, all right, so I think the issue is that what I probably want to make this better, to like kind of do what I'm imagining, is actually have, so let me try, but this is going to be the most crazy, weird editing job ever. So I'm not really happy with how this turned out. And I think there's an issue here, which, you know, even though what I'm doing makes sense in terms of those formulas that I ported from Wikipedia, I think what I really want to get the behavior that I'm imagining in my head, just bear with me for a second, that what I actually want is, let me try having two separate angle variables. Uh, oops. So let me try having angle one, and this is kind of terrible, angle A and angle B. And let me actually have rate A 
and rate B. And let me, instead of this multiplying, let me actually treat those separately. And I'm going to say rate A and rate B are some value like this. So let's take a look at this now. Okay, what did I mess up? Uh, oh, and angle A, rate A, angle B, rate B. And by the way, I guess I could be calling these things X and Y because they're for the X and Y axis. And what did I mess up? Do I have an error? Angle one is not defined. Where did I say angle? Oh, so this should say angle A and angle B, angle A, angle B. Uh, angle is not defined, line 31, angle A, angle B. Well, I'm losing my mind here. Uh, so this is doing more what I expect because it's going to like really, really slow down. And then it should pick itself back up. And so if I were to change these now between like 1 and 10, Yeah, this is kind of, I don't know that this is any better. Oh wow, and it's really like, it's really consistently making the exact same shape. <laughs> really interesting, weird, like, curvy shape here. Uh, yeah. Uh, and there, do I have the offset there? Yeah. Ah, yeah. So what's going on here? I'm actually, this is, so I'm actually just back to where I was at the beginning, but I'm changing the speed of the circle. It's fascinating. You're not interested in this at all. Let's take this whole, when, I, when this coding challenge gets uploaded, that whole section will also be gone. Um, I should have had a plan. I'm going to do 10 for it. It's going to be great. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, it's a good point in saying, like, um, I, why am I mapping? I think it was a bad idea to try to change the rate mapping sign. Because ultimately, well, forget about that digression. Then I can have this be a, a all these like weird little shapes. Okay, let's let me let me uh, forget about that digression. That won't make it into the video either. <laughs> I got to stop this one. I should just end it where it was. I'm going back. How much do I have to undo? Wow, I really did a lot of horrible stuff to this. I could also just try to correct it. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is back to what I had before. Uh, your, it could be from sign adding together over time. Your rate is not changing at a speed that is perfectly consistent. Uh, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> The video is going to end where it ended before. Uh, Chris Ray said, Joseph says, I agree with you, Chris Ray, but what did Chris, you should really work on organizing your, what did Chris Ray say? You need Git. Yeah, no kidding. I can't believe you guys are watching this. It's horrible. I'm going to do 10 print. This is just going to have to be, um, so I'm going to finish this video again, just in case we need a new ending for it. Um, so I've really done a horrible job with this like ugly monstrosity that's kind of now spinning out of control but hopefully watching this video you see the pieces of harmonic motion and what you might be able to create. I'm going to come back actually I think I would like to do um, 
Uh, you know what we should do? Actually, let's stop. Let's do one more thing with this video. Okay, I'm gonna change this. Let's try to make it a guitar string that plucks, even though it was one of my ideas. Let's do that. So I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna change, I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> the colors are so ugly. <laughs> Two matrix math. I was doing, I'm gonna wrap this up. This is a terrible idea. I just, okay. So I'm not very happy with this end result. You can see that this, uh, I've got this sort of strange behavior with some very ugly colors, but hopefully you've gotten the basic idea here of simple harmonic motion, the idea of sine and cosine, how you can tie that to a value. You know, you might just think of something, a breathing shape, a guitar string plucking. I'm gonna come back and try to do maybe a different coding challenge that has a bit more <laughs> direction to it with this, and I will look for your suggestions of what might be useful. But um, hopefully you can make something beautiful out of this. Uh, take a look at that Lisa Ju um, uh, Wikipedia page and, and think about oscillating motion and make a beautiful design. Uh, think about sound, size, uh, color, and, and make something much less ugly and weird than what I have made here. Okay, thanks very much for watching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was such a disaster. That's one of my worst coding challenges ever. I hope this never sees the light of day. All right, let's quickly. Try to salvage things here. Um, uh, 10 print. I'm going to do 10 print. Um, and let's run a little server. It's already in use. Why is it already in use? Oh, I have another window open. Everybody should unsubscribe to my Patreon right now. And <laughs> Bernardo says, this is my first time watching. What's happening? A total meltdown is what's happening. You know how Yining's tutorial about the Brick Baker game was so well thought out and paced and everything? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back next week and... Uh, Things will be good. Okay. Uh, and come back terminal. Open up this folder. Sketch. Um, okay. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I'm getting ready for 10. I have the book. I have two copies of this book and I really should have it here to hold up, but it's downstairs. So I feel bad about that, but uh, let me see. What do I want to reference? This looks pretty good. Let me, um, yeah, okay. Okay, I am ready for, this coding challenge has a plan, it has a purpose, it's gonna be really short, it's gonna inspire lots of creative ideas, and it's gonna redeem, it's gonna, it's, it's, this is my redemption story. I can feel it already. Um, let me come over here and erase the whiteboard, in case I need to use it. And uh, Mathieu, if you're still, if, when you're watching this later and deciding what to do, I don't mind if that simple harmonic motion coding challenge just gets scrapped. I could come back and do it again, something better. People got, to, it's here on the live stream if there's nothing redeemable about it. All right, I gotta do the, um, 
custom shapes video. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. The cameras are probably going to shut off in the middle of this. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I, sometimes I think if I press the button in the middle, it gives it a half an hour. All right. I'm very excited about this coding challenge. This coding challenge is inspired by the book called Ten Print, which is all about this line of code. Ten print CHR dollar sign 205.5 plus random one go to 10. So this is a line of code for the Commodore 64. And this book, which is written by, uh, uh, by a, 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 a collaboration of many authors, I'll put a link to information about this book. The book is available for free as a PDF online. I'm looking at the website right now. Um, and it's a beautiful book. I have two copies of it downstairs. I wish I had my one copy to hold up here right now. Um, but it really looks at the history of creative computing sort of through the lens of this one line of code for an old Commodore 64 computer. So what does this line of code do? So here's a nice uh, YouTube video. I'll link to this as well. I'm going to make this full screen here where you can see an emulator now typing out this line of code. And let's see what we get. Run. Run it. Oh, there we go. Look at this. We get this interesting maze pattern. So let me pause this for a second and let's try to figure out why is this happening. So this is uh, the basic programming language. I think that's right. That's actually one of the first programming languages I ever used when I was probably when I was in I think about third grade on an Apple II C. I seem to remember. Um, back with basic programming language, lines of code had a line number like the line ten. Tr print says print something out to the screen to the con. It's really just only a text console. And then this is print the character either. And I'm assuming here that the character two hundred five in ASCII code is a forward slash and the character 206 in ASCII code is a backward slash. So randomly pick up, make this math problem between 205.5 plus 1. I'm either going to get 206 or 205. So print out either forward slash or backslash slash and then go to 10. So I want to recreate this and I'm not the, there's examples already been made in processing. I'm really just uh, redoing what's already been done from the, the, the publication of this book, but I want to do it as a coding challenge and see what kind of creative possibilities emerge um, because you could, this system, which has a shape, two shapes, and probability, think of what you could do if you change the way the probability works, if you allow it to be controlled, if you think about the shapes creatively. Now that we have Canvas and the browser, there's a lot of possibilities here. So let me, uh, and, uh, 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 and again, if I said anything wrong about the Commodore 64 and basic and ASCII code. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the chat and then I'll come back at the end of this video and, and correct that. Okay, so let's look. Let's, I, I need to uh, write a setup function and I'm going to make a canvas. That's 400 by 400 and I'm going to say background zero just so we can see it easily and I'm going to go to the browser and I'm going to unfull screen this and I'm going to go here and now I have my canvas. There we go. So what do I want to do? First, let's figure out how do I draw a forward slash or a backward slash. So I could draw it as a line. Line 0, 0, 10, 10. This is, I don't know, that's like a backward slash. Like that, right? Now I could say line, now what do I want? If I want to go from the bottom to the top, like a forward slash, I'm going to go from 0, 10 to 10, 0, right? forward slash. Now I've drawn them both there. So now what I want to do is I want to say, ah, maybe, how do I do probability? So I've done this in a lot of videos and I'm just typing it out. Now I probably, uh, I, I, so let's think about it. Just type this out here. This is a way of, of, a, of applying a probabilistic function. I don't know if that's a good way to say it. This is probability in my code because I'm going to pick a random number between 0 and 1. Half the time it's going to be greater than 0.5, half the time it's going to be less than 0.5. So half the time I'm going to draw a backward slash, half the time I'm going to draw a forward slash. Now of course it's just doing this over and over again in the same space on top of each other. So what I want to do is move forward as if I were a console printing out forward slash backward slash. So what I need is some global variables like let x equal 0, let y equal 0. So I'm going to draw these at x, 
y, x plus 10, uh, y plus 10. I could use a translate or something, but let me just do it with offsets. Uh, y plus 10, sorry, and x plus 10, and y. So just to make sure, it's still sort of the same thing. But now, what, could I, what do I need to do? What if I increase x? x equals x plus 10. So every frame, I'm going to move to the next spot. There we go. One line. Now, it's hard to see that all the way across. One line all the way across. And um, oh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh, you know what's important here? I should think of the 10 as some sort of like space. I'm going to call that spacing. So, because we might want to change that. So I should really use a variable for that. And then, if x gets to the end, if it's greater than width, I should reset x back to 0 and have y increase by spacing. So let's look at that. There we go. I now have 10 print in P5JS. Um, now, uh, Casey Reese actually has uh, artwork uh, all about 10 print and with a lot of varieties uh, of changing. Um, wait, hold on. Let me say that again. Let me pause, edit points here. Casey Reese 10 print. I, when I saw Casey's show here in New York, um, the, there was a screen, but I guess that's really just from the book. Yeah, this is his website here with stuff about the book. All right, um, never mind. Let me restate that. <laughs> Let this get a little further. I still have an x plus 10, I, you think. Do I have an error? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, in the chat, I just was told I left the 10 here by accident. So let me fix that. So now here's the thing. What's kind of amazing is that simple code created this suddenly quite elaborate, beautiful maze pattern. And uh, I've, you know, thank you to the authors of the 10 print book for inspiring me uh, when the book came out to like really try this and use this in my teaching. Um, I often give this as an assignment to look at the book and try to like invent your own 10 print design. So how would you invent your own 10 print design? Well, what are the parameters of the system? One thing is just the spacing. So, you know, I can make spacing equal 50, and that's going to change things quite a bit. Let me put it back at 20, just so we can sort of see it a little bit bigger and moves a little bit more quickly. But one thing I could do is change the probability. So what if I say, you know what? There's a 90% chance of drawing a backward slash or a forward slash. I don't know which one's which, a 10% of the other one. Now we get a pattern that has a certain quality to it because almost all the slashes are backslashes except for every once in a while there's a forward slash. That probability could be adjusted with a slider over time. I could also think about color. You know, I, the, the other thing here is like, what if I just did something like draw a rectangle or not? You know, even just this idea of each cell on this grid, either placing a rectangle there or not, I've already got some type of generative comp. So this is really, what I guess what this is, is this is an example of computational design or procedural design. I have an algorithm that specifies the design. You have Saul Lewitt's wall drawings. I'll try to put some link, links to information about the artist Saul Lewitt and his wall drawings. It's a nice example of this. The rules are generating the design, and that design could be the same every time, but with probability it could be different every time. So I hope um, I don't want to go much further with this and change too much more because I would like to see what you do uh, in, and you could also think, by the way, you could, the other thing you could change is the, the way that I'm drawing this is I'm animating it one line at a time without changing the background, but you could think about displaying it all at once or animating it in a different way from the center. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities there too. So I hope that you will create your own 10 print design. You will share it with me uh, on Twitter or in the comments, and then you can also submit it as a pull request to the readme file that's associated with this sketch's code, and I'll include a link to that also in this video's description. Um, so hold on one second. Did I mess anything up about my Commodore 64 and explaining the basic programming language? I'm looking in the chat. So why is it that, so I'm, so I'm noticing in the chat, 
first of all, people are complaining that I'm not using const. You're never gonna, you're never gonna get me to use const here. But um, <laughs> um, let's look at the ASCII table. So did the ASCII table change? Where's forward slash? Forty-seven and backward slash is ninety-two. So why? What did I miss? Why is it two hundred five point five? Um, so someone's going to explain this to me in a second because I, I want to get this is important. I think. M and N. I, I, I can see this like K Weekman is typing. Me, I am so me is typing. I see these is typing in the patron Slack group because uh, I'm also looking at their YouTube chat here. But um, Special Commodore 64 only car set. Okay, so maybe that's what it is. Commodore 64 do not use ASCII. Okay, great. So what, where, where's a good place for me to... Uh, import, important correction. Uh, it turns out that the Commodore 64 did not use the ASCII table as we know it today. It has its own character set. That's why, because the ASCII code for a backslash is like 42 or 92 or 97. That's not that. You, I could look it up in an ASCII table, but it doesn't match 205 and 206. So I did get that wrong in my earlier explanation. Um, I'm seeing in the chat, it's the extended ASCII table. So I didn't see any other corrections. I think I mostly got everything else right in this video. And so please share with me your 10 print designs. Uh, check out the book 10 print. Thank the authors of the book for the great work that they did to uh, talk about the history of this line of code and how it relates to creative computing. Compoting. <laughs> Goodbye, and I'll see you in another coding challenge. Thanks. Uh, oh, that's a great idea. Iran in the chat says make a 10 print out of a given image. So that's kind of a cool idea. Um, all right. It is 6.50. Let me check my phone, to see if there are any emergency things going on that I don't know about. Uh, I paid my AT&T bill. That's good. I have AT&T. Maybe I should switch. Spoiler alert. That's my, that's not a spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to really want to redeem myself here. Let's look at my original list from today. Uh, okay. Oh, the API stuff. Shoot. So what am I willing to try to do before I leave? This was a disaster. Come back to that another time. I did 10 print. I don't know that I want to do the win data. I definitely don't want to do the matrix math. This was a suggestion by Simon that I will, I've got to think about some more. And this is stuff for later. Do I have it in me? I could definitely do the custom shapes. Uh, not the wiki API. What's wrong with the Wikipedia? I don't have a video tutorial about using it and it could be quite useful. I do have an example. Uh, let me go look at the example. Just see. Uh, GitHub.com. This is for one of my classes. ZF. I was going to try to make a Wikipedia like crawler where it would you type in a word, it goes to that article, and then it finds a link to another article and a link to another article, so it's almost like an exquisite corpse, like random sequence. That's what I was thinking to make. Um, that's what I was thinking to make. I want to look at my Wikipedia code. One of the thing, reasons why I like using the Wikipedia API is that um, you don't have to authenticate to it. So this is search for a particular article and then I do something where I uh, get the data from that article. Hmm. Oh, all right, everybody. Use arcs, please. What was on the straw poll? All right, let's try HSB. <laughs> that harmonic motion thing has got to just get tossed. Let me try to do some more stuff. So uh, let's straw poll this. Uh, I might try to do both of these. Which, which one first? Custom shape tutorial. That actually I really should do because it's relevant to the clouds thing. You kind of need it for the clouds things. Vertex, 
curve vertex, and Wikipedia crawler. I kind of want, I want a different name for that. Wikipedia, I guess it's a crawler. I would like to try to do both of these. This has been a very long live stream, but I feel like I'm going to need a quick break to, <laughs> to use the bathroom. Uh, so cue learning. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to happen right now. Uh, so this is the new straw poll. W1E8XKAX. Just in case I can only do one, I'm curious what people think. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to cause you all to cringe. Maybe some of you didn't see, did, see the, the, should I play the trailer again? For those of you who didn't get to see it earlier while I take a quick pee break. Good idea or bad idea? <laughs> should I do a straw poll for that? <laughs> Why do you straw poll if you're going to pick what you want later? It's a very, very valid criticism and I apologize that I didn't actually do what was on the straw poll. But I was, I looked, um, so maybe I shouldn't. Trailer, okay. Um, so I'm going to play this trailer a while and see it's one minute long. I'm going to mute the microphone when I play it because otherwise that'll be embarrassing. And I'm going to see if I can make it back within one minute. Otherwise, it's just going to, um, uh, oh, it's just going to go to black at the end. So there's just going to be some black nothingness until I get back. But I think I could pee within one minute. We're going to see. This is, this is the pee challenge. My, my son loves this joke, which I won't tell right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell it. There's a student in the class who's learning about the alphabet. And the teacher says, student, please recite the alphabet. And the student says, I really, really, I really have to go to the bathroom. Well, recite the alphabet first. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, Q. Oh, I, I ruined the joke. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oh, this is terrible. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. One more time, won't you sing with me? And the teacher says, what happened to the P? And the student says, it's halfway down my leg. <laughs> I don't have the ba-dump chump. <laughs> Terrible. Is that an old joke? Other people know that joke? Okay, here we go. Ready for the trailer? That's a, uh, here we go. One, two, three. I can make it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all set. I got to mute the microphone, hit the trailer, and be back. Let's find something we want to make, some crazy idea. We'll figure out what it takes to make that dream appear. We'll try to understand now as we ride along again. Now hop on the coding train, coding train, coding train. Come along and join us as we light it up in code. Using only our imagination as the road. Whatever you're conceiving. We'll make things of our own creation. Fireworks! Shapes and jumps and space. We can generate sounds or trees or mazes. Make a butterfly or reflect our faces. A retro game. Right, and, and never forget that this time just hop on the coding train. Coding train. Coding train. I'm back. Okay. Did I, hopefully I muted my microphone correctly. I'm noticing that this mic is actually in like a horrible position on my shirt. I'm surprised that people could actually hear me. It was like pointed down. So hopefully the audio is fine. Maybe the audio is a little bit quiet. Uh, can we fix that? All right. Almost in time. <laughs> the cringe is real. I, I should just release that video now, but uh, I'm going to release that after. Okay, so let's look at the results here. Whoa, oh my god. No way. Look at this. This is the most amazing moment in coding train history. 166, first of all, 166 people voted on this, which is kind of amazing. 
and we got exactly 50-50. Did you guys play? Are you, is this like a trolling me sort of thing? <laughs> Let's refresh the results. Oh, we got one more. Wait, that's weird. One more for the Wikipedia crawler. Fascinating. Oh, so you know what this means. You know what this means, everybody. It's time for the spinning wheel. Shiftman, and I could use a lot of contributions to make this better. GitHub.io slash randomizer. Custom shapes, customer shapes, custom shapes, Wikipedia. All right, here we go. We are going to spin this wheel. We are going to figure out which one to do. I must, by the way, I can do the straw poll and then not listen to the straw poll, but I cannot do the spinning wheel and not listen to the spinning wheel. I have to obey the spinning wheel. So I'm just going to keep pressing this button and then at some point I will stop. Here we go, Wikipedia, custom shapes. Apparently you can't blow air and wind onto a simulated arrow thing that's not even on a screen because this is a green wall, but I did try. No, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Guess what, everybody? I apologize. Uh, if you're in the patron chat, I, um, it wasn't scrolling, so I missed, I missed all these messages. Creative composting, composting. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, fluid, uh, ha ha, precise. So I'm just checking, trolling successful, the hypno wheel. Okay. Uh, the 200, the 20, oh, the bit rate. Yeah, I should try, let me try changing the bit rate. Because <laughs> why not? Let me just try that right now. Since I'm like three hours into this, uh, stream, output, wait, output, streaming. I'm going to try changing the bit rate to 5,000. I don't know if it'll really do that in real time, but let's try. Okay, I just changed, look at the straw poll again. I just changed the bit rate. Ah, custom shape is up by one vote. You know, we gotta go with the wheel. Look at that, that's amazing. All right, well, but I'm gonna do both. Let's do the Wikipedia first, because it'll take forever. <laughs> and then I'll be, it'll be a disaster and I'll be motivated to do the custom shapes thing again. Okay, so let's try to create, let's, I'm so hungry, I need to eat some dinner, I need more coffee, and I should not be doing this right now, it's 7 o'clock. I have to leave at 7.30. 7.45. Uh, uh, desktop. Uh, P5 generate dash B uh, Wikipedia crawler. Uh, then what I want to do is CD Wikipedia crawler, Adam. Uh, then what I need to do is go to the go to the desktop. Oh, I'm already in this, and I need to quit my old terminal thing that I had open because I can never seem to and uh, run a server. Is that in my history? Yep. Uh, okay. Then what I need to do is look at the. Wikipedia API documentation, which is uh, here, I think. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> oh boy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Boy, I don't like this documentation. Okay, getting text messages that I can't respond to right now. Uh, no canvas. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I might just have to... Equals and search equals... There's a mistake in my code. Let's look at this. Search equals uh, rainbow. Okay, great. So this gives me a search for all the articles that have rainbow. Uh, and then it looks up, it gives me the content for the main, oh no, it gives me like a, it gives me like a one sentence about each of these. Um, so now if I want to look at an actual article, I, I'm just gonna, I, I, I've waded through this documentation before and I don't wanna have to do that again. So I want to do this. Uh, content uh, action equals query, prop equals revision. This is weird. This is the callback for the article content. But how do I know which oh, article it is? Oh, and titles equals the article. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So now I also need to say, and titles, I think I can do multiple ones, but, so yeah, this gives me all the content on the rainbow page. Title, rainbow, and if I did like rainbow trout, right? Rainbow trout. And then this is like finding other titles, right? Okay. <laughs> Good night, Simon. You've been very, 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 very quick. Make a bot to play the game, the wicked game. Oh my God, it's 1 a.m. It's 1 a.m. in <laughs> where Simon is. Thank you for watching, Simon. I'm sorry that this has gone on so late. I hope this has been helpful and useful and interesting for you. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right, where are we? Let's see. Okay, so I think I'm good. I just want to have these in. I'm just going to put these in my code already because there's no way I'm going to be able to remember them. And that is fine. Okay. All right. Here we go, everybody. We're gonna do a Wikipedia thing. There's a South Korean band called Rainbow, cool. All right, um, so this is the documentation. Oh, this is the documentation, this is better. Yeah, this is what I wanna look at. This is actually what I meant to look at. Uh, titles equals main page, pro right, okay. So, all right. Um, so let me close all this, close this, and localhost this, open this. All right, here we go everybody, you ready for this? I'm just trying to make a crazy amount of content. <laughs> Quantity over quality is the name of the game here at the Coding Train. Probably not the smartest idea. But I can't, sometimes I get into this mode where I can't stop. Here we go. Hello, I am going to do a coding challenge with the Wikipedia API. Um, I don't think I've done this before. I'm not exactly entirely sure what I'm going to build. In a way, it might be better for me just to do a tutorial about the Wikipedia API, but let's make this a challenge. So this is what I'm thinking. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting, uh, uh, things you could do at, if you can get access to the, the contents of Wikipedia. You can make poetry machines and all sorts of experimental text things. But one thing I know that people have done effectively is make games that you can play by sort of crawling and moving around Wikipedia. Um, and I, there are lots of interesting examples about that. <laughs> I was looking at the chat. So what I'm going to attempt to do, I think, is create a sketch where... Um, uh, um, I'm going to say uh, user input. I'm going to create a little user input box. And I'm going to say user input equals, I'm going to use the p5 function create input. 
So now we should, if I go to the code, we should have a nice little input box. And I'm going to say, um, uh, and you know what I'm actually going to do? Let me do this differently. Instead of using the create function, let me get rid of this styling stuff. Let me actually put it in the HTML. So Wikipedia coding challenge thing. I'm hoping that I'll make something kind of un not interesting. <laughs> Sorry. I'm hoping that I'm going to make something not so interesting and that you, the viewer, will learn and see how I did it, but have a more creative and, and, uh, mind to make something more interesting and exciting. So I'm going to say uh, word and then I'm going to say input ID equals user input uh, input. So I just, I prefer to like put the, the elements that I want on the web page in HTML. So now we can see and I, so now what I can do instead of this, I can say select. Uh, oh, time out. <laughs> I'm getting some text messages. <laughs> I have to respond to these. If I'm going to stream past 7 o'clock on a Friday, I have to respond to my text messages <laughs> when they're important. I shouldn't look at them. Okay. Um, oh, great. Um, let's see. I'll be done in <laughs> soon. <laughs> You out going pretty long tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'd rather just select it, um, uh, and now we have access to what's written in it. In um, and so, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Input. Is there something wrong with my HTML here? Oh yeah, this should be H1. Thank you. Uh, so there we go. So, uh, and actually, let me make it H2 because it's so large. There we go. So I want to enter in a word here. Hello, and hit like enter or something. So when I hit enter, uh, I can handle that event saying user input changed. Go wiki. So what I want to do is have a function when the user hits enter or tab that that will signal that there's been a change in the text field. I could also add a button or something, but I'm not worrying about interface design here. You can worry about that when you redo what I do. And now I'm just going to write a function and I'm going to call it go wiki. And the first thing that I want to do is just get what is in that, uh, what is in the, so first I want to, uh, I'm going to say let word or term or something, term equal user input dot value console.log term. I, I, I don't know what I just did there, but okay. Okay, so again, this is my sort of friendly style of writing JavaScript. You could do this in 15 different other ways, but that's what I'm gonna do. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add rainbow in here. So, it, oops, that's not right. I guess I say value equals rainbow. So it's in there, and then uh, changed of null. Uh, so the ID here is user input, and then in here, I said select, oh, user input. So it would be nice if I put an N in there. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so now if I hit enter, tab, oh, it hasn't changed actually. Yeah, so rainbows. So the funny thing is, is it started with a rainbow when I hit enter? <laughs> it did, so I should probably use a button or submit, whatever. I'm actually going to skip bypass all of that, and I'm just going to... When the, when the code starts, I'm just going to immediately call go wiki. So I'm using this just like I, I want to set up an interface to make this dynamic with different words, but I just want every time I refresh the page for it to run to test what's going, working. So I should see every time I run it, I get a console log of what's in there. I could change a different word. So now the first thing I want to do is look for a list of articles uh, with that term in it. So uh, I, you know, I've already done the research about the Wikipedia API and how it works. Normally in these coding challenges, I like to kind of like figure that out, but I have to admit the Wikipedia document, API documentation is a bit difficult is to read, but here it is. And I can see this, this is basically what I'm using here, I think, is that this is looking for, this URL tells to send you the content of a page, but there's also like a, a URL to get, a, to do a search. So you can look through and read all about how to do this, <laughs> but I'm actually just gonna, I already have a URL right here. This is for a search. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say var URL equals, and actually let's, um, let me use the, let me make these, and I'm going to, I have to use let, not var. I'm going to say, oops, put this, put this back up at the top there. I'm going to say let uh, search URL equal, and this is the full URL. I'm going to go all the way to the end and close the quotes, but I'm going to take that out because what I want to do is have an end and then I want the search term to form dynamically. So I'm going to say let URL equal search URL plus term. So let's just console log that URL to see that that's working. Ah, there we go. So now you can see that's the full URL. It's searching for a rainbow and that's dynamic because if I were to put in here, you know, unicorn and hit enter, now I'm going to get unicorn. So the first thing that I want to do is just sort of see what's in that. I'm a, I want to, uh, can I, can I just want to copy this URL and I want to look at it. Ah, I didn't get it. I, want to, I probably could just click on it instead of copying it, but I'm going to put it in here and look, this is the JSON. JavaScript object notation formatted data that's coming from the Wikipedia API. And it's giving me a list of all the possible pages with the term rainbow in it. So let me just pick the first one. So how do I even get that? So uh, it's coming in as an, so first of all, I have to request it from my code. I, I'm looking at it in the browser. So I want to say load JSON URL, and then I'm going to say got data. So let's make sure this comes through. And I'm going to write a function called got data. And that's the callback for when the data comes through. And I'm kind of entering into a dangerous territory of having all these nested callbacks. First, there's a callback for the input box. Then there's a callback for the data. Then I'm going to do something else with the callback. So someday, I might want to refactor this using a sort of more thoughtful approach of how to sequence all these callbacks. But I'm just going to kind of do it willy-nilly right now. Console.log data. So let's see what happens here. Ah, so look at this. Uh, this is like <laughs> the bane of everybody's existence on the internet. Access control, allow origin header not present. Ah, I cannot use it, course disabled, blah, 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 blah. So this is a, a really unfortunate. Um, it the Wikipedia API doesn't seem to have something called cores, which is cross origin resources or something like that enabled, allowing us to fetch data from another server from a server, which is where our code is running. Some APIs will let you do this, some won't. I'm pretty sure since I've used this before in code that there's a way around this. It's called JSONP. I sort of made a video about this somewhere else. It's JSON with padding and P5 has a nice uh, option. So often what I do, and I've said this before, is eh, it didn't work. I got cores. Let me just add another argument here, JSONP. So if I last add this third argument, let me try it with JSONP and let me run it again. And there we go. It came through. So we could say a lot more about that, but in this case, we're just lucky. We tried it first without JSONP. Now we try it with JSONP. So what I'm looking for is it comes in as an array. I want the first element, the first element of the first element of the array. So I'm going to try to see if I can say console log uh, data zero, zero. Let's see what I get. And I could pick a random one that might be more interesting, but let me just pick the first one. I got R. Hmm. Did I get the, oh, zero, no, one, zero. Sorry, I want data one, the second element, the first element of the second element. There we go, rainbow. So let's just see, rainbow, let's try putting other things in here like unicorn <laughs> and uh, let's just try like a few characters like RE. There's a, <laughs> I guess there's a Wikipedia page for RE. P, <laughs> Wikipedia page for <laughs> P, U, Y. Okay, what's going on here? Let's look at the full data. <laughs> zero. P U Y. Oh, there is a Wikipedia page for P U Y, which is the French pronunciation. The point is, if I enter it in a search term <laughs> that was just part of a page, I wouldn't get it back. But you, you'll think of something. So now, what I want to do? Okay. So once I have the, what? To, I'm going to pause for a second and think of something. Okay. I've got to. Um, I've got to think of some, what about, what's a sequence of characters that 
uh, uh, that wouldn't be its own thing in Wikipedia. TL? TL? TLC? <laughs> uh, EXC, someone is saying in the chat. No. <laughs> Nick, there is a Wikipedia page for EXC, right? E EXC, what I'm basically getting, yeah, look at this. Okay, I can't think of anything, it doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna change. So let's change it to random. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna say let length equal data index one dot length. It's probably, it's, I think it's gonna just give me sort of 10 by default. And then I'm gonna say let index equal floor random length. So I wanna pick a random index into that array and I'm going to say data index one, data one index. So this should give me a random article. That'll be better. Um, let me go back to my thing here. And so I got rainbow, the South Korean band. If I type in, what was I, P-U-Y? I got P-U-Y. <laughs> but there are other ones. It won't, I, it, it's, I, didn't, I gotta have the submit button. <laughs> uh, unicorn. I got unicorn bubble. So you can see I'm gonna get a random one each time. Let's do rainbow again. I got rainbow bright. Let's do unicorn again. And I got unicorns, the cricket team. Okay, so we're getting a random article each time. That's good. I forgot what I'm doing here exactly, but now let's at least get the article's data. So the next thing that I wanna do once I have that title, so really what I'm saying is var title equals this. Now one thing about Wikipedia titles is let's say I try to actually look for uh, unicorns cricket team on Wikipedia. So I'm gonna go to uh, Wiki Unicorns Cricket Team Wikipedia. See if I can get that page. Here it is. Look at the URL. The title, the way Wikipedia works is it actually uses underscores wherever there are spaces. So I'm gonna need to account for that. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna say title equals replace, uh, oh sorry, title, this is a JavaScript function um, that allows me to use a regular expression you can watch my regular expression tutorials. Um, match any white space. I could have just done this, any like space, but let's do, um, I'm gonna be smart about this, any uh, one or more white space in a row with an underscore. And now let me console log that title. And let's see what this looks like. You can see I got rainbow flag now. Oh, you know what I forgot? It only replaced the first space. So I need to have the global flag here, so it replaces all the spaces. And I, now you can see it replaced all the spaces. Rainbow, trout, etc. Rainbow, rainbow bright, etc. Okay, so here we go. Now, what am I gonna do? Now I need to ask Wikipedia, and here's the next. This is, uh, I'm gonna call this the content URL. This is the URL for asking for the content. And I think you can ask, the fact that it, uh, it, you can see at the end here, it's titles equals. I think you can ask for content of multiple articles, but I'm just gonna do one. So what I'm going to do now is back into my code. I'm gonna go down here and see what I mean by this sort of nested callback thing that I've done is kind of a bit of a problem. Um, I'm going to say load JSON. Uh, okay, let, oh, I used the var here, let. Let, let URL equal uh, the content URL plus the title. And did I call it uh, content URL with lowercase rl? Content URL plus the title. And then load JSON URL and then got, now I need another, call. you know, most people when writing JavaScript, I don't know, most people would put an anonymous function right in there, that's the callback or use some type of other technique to have nested callbacks like async or promises. I'm gonna be uh, pretty terrible about it and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this got search and I'm gonna call this got content and just write another function. Call this data and I'm gonna say console, whoops, and I'm gonna say console.log data, okay? So now I wanna see, I wanna look at the, I'm gonna say console.log uh, uh, querying and 
title. Oh, there's that new like back tick, fancy way in ES6 of you doing strings. I gotta do that at some point <laughs> also. Okay, somebody remind me. Okay, so let's do this. Ah, oh, so I went for rainbow bright, but it didn't get the content of rainbow bright. So what I'm going to do is say, ah, why? Because I forgot about JSON P. So I have to do JSON P. I had that cross origin error again. And does this look like I got stuff? This looks weird. Mm, all right, let's see. Rainbow flag. Let's try this again. Rainbow flag. So, I'm, so what did I miss here? Um, Backtick template strings. Okay, hold on. What did I miss? Timeout, edit, point. Mm, so this didn't work. Content URL plus title. Let's look at that. Let's log that URL. So this is the URL. Copy link address. Oh, oh, it is coming. Oh, it. Apologies. So. Actually, this is working. I, I just find this to be totally confusing to look at, but the content is in there. I, I should have thought, like, I have to go and investigate how the JSON is formatted first. So I can say, I can, I can copy this link and look at it. And by the way, I have a Chrome extension installed. It's called, like, uh, JSON Formatter to let me look at the stuff this way. So really what this is, I got to look under Query, Pages. Huh? I have to know the idea. Hold on a second here. So pages, page idea, revisions. Oh my God, goodness. Three items, content format, uh, star. This is what I want, which is all, this is the, the Wikipedia API is organized strangely. And maybe there's another way to do this, but I actually need to, uh, I think I might, um, I have to think about how do I, if I don't, if the page ID is gonna be different, how do I know what to look up? Because mm. revisions is under this page ID. Did I get the page ID in the previous query? So hold on, I have to look at the previous query. Is there a page ID in here? There's no page ID here. All right, time out again. The first one, can I use, just do the first? I can do index for the first object. Is that what I need to do? Object keys, data query, uh, okay, okay, look, I could look up the keys. That's a good point that Alka is making. Uh, there's an interesting discussion in the chat going on about const. I gotta look at my text messages while I'm taking this break. Oh, okay. Um. All right, hold on. Let me think about this. Okay, so while I see the content here under star, there's something pretty tricky about this, which is I don't know what this is going to be. It's the page ID. So I've got to pull that dynamically somehow. Let's see if we can figure that out. So I know I want to go to query, pages, and then something. So let me look at this. Uh, right here, console log data. I can get rid of this console log. Let me say data pages query. So let's look at that. Undefined, undefined. What did I miss? Let's data pages. Undefined. Okay, so I messed that up. Oh, it's just. Hold on. Query is, sorry, looks like query is the first object I want. Data query. Yep. Now pages. Sorry. Let me start over. Query pages. I did, okay. Let me um, pour Matya. So looking at this, I have query, pages, and then some number, which is the page ID, which is something that's gonna be different for every article. So I have to somehow pull that dynamically in order to get down here to this stuff, which is the content, which is what I want. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, let me look here and I can change this console log, data.query.pages. Let's see what I get. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. Let me hit refresh. So I got it. So how do I know what this number is? Can I just use like an index? I could get the key. I could say object.keys. But what if I just say index zero? Will that work for the first object? No, undefined. So I could say um, object.keys to give me all the keys that are in this. And then look, I've got that. So the page ID, this is pretty weird that what I'm doing. I don't know if there's a better way to do this. Page ID equals object keys data query pages index zero. Index zero. So let's see if that gives me the page ID. Uh, whoops, I have too many brackets. What have I messed up here? Uh, too many parentheses. And okay, here we go. <laughs> Lots of errors here. Here we go. Let's try to get this right. This, this deserves a drum roll. Am I going to see the page ID? Yes. And I'm going to see different page IDs. Look at that. So I'm able to get the page IDs. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so now what I want is the content to be equal to, uh, so, so let, um, I'm just gonna call it page equal data query pages. And now I wanna say page, page ID, right? Because I wanna go and look at, um, uh, I want to look at page, pages, oh pages, page ID revisions star, dot revisions uh, star. Now here's the thing, you can say dot the name of the thing if it's a valid variable name like revisions, but I can't say dot star because star is not a valid character for a variable, so I've got to use these brackets. Boy, I'm really off my rocker here with this crazy convoluted using Wikipedia. Oh, okay, here we go. Let's see, what's the chance that I got something here? Uh, oh, let's look, console.log content. Undefined. Mm. Let's look at revisions. Okay, I got something there. Revisions, zero. Oh, it's an array. So zero star. Oh my goodness. Zero Star. These are really, this is like detective work. It's not even programming. Just to figure out how this thing works. There, there, look, there's the content of the Wikipedia page. I finally got the content of the Wikipedia page. Now what do I do with that? Oh no. <laughs> um, so let's do, let's, let's first do a couple things. Let's say, uh, let me at least say right about, right before I ask for the content, let me say create P title. So I got that and now I got the content. If I type unicorn in here, I, and I get the content. So now the question is, what do I wanna do? Well, I could search for a word and then I could, I could pick a random word and then search for articles with that random word in it. Why not, right? I could look for links, like I could look for special links to other Wikipedia pages, but let's be really simple about this and let's just actually, <laughs> let's use another regular expression, I gotta move they got to make this challenge, I got to finish up, they got to wrap this challenge up somehow. So let's use a regular expression. Let's say um, um, I want to say a word, a word regex equals um, any valid sequence of word characters, one or more. And let's actually, let's say it has to be at least four or more. So it has to be at least be like a four letter word. And then, um, and I could put word boundaries, right? Word boundaries, I guess, and then make it global. And then I could say, what, how do I do this again? I say word regex exec or match, or do I say content match? I can't even remember my own reg regular expression. Content match, the word regular expression. Uh, by the way, I'm kind of off my rocker here in the sense that I am now using all sorts of stuff like regular expressions. You could go look at my regular expressions tutorials. But what I'm trying to do here is create match a given word. 
And a, a word is any sequence of characters, four or more I'm deciding. And then I, I want to look at this. So let's see, I don't know if I did this right. Let's see if this gives me a bunch of words on the page. It, look, it did. It gave me 2,474 words, like vandalism, vandalism, expiry, October. So now what I'm going to do, oh boy, is I'm going to pick one of those randomly. And by the way, the nice thing, and it's in, it's just an array. And if the whole thing is an array, p5, the random function, I can give it an array. And it'll pick me a random one from it. And I'm going to put that in now. Whoops, sorry, sorry, I, I messed up. What am I doing here? Let me go back. The nice thing about P5 is I can now say, I'm gonna say var words equals the result of this regular expression, then var word equals pick a random one. So the P5 random function could actually give it a random, pick a random one out. And I'm gonna say console.log word, and I'm going to run this. And it gave me average. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go wiki. And you know what I'm just going to give this? Forget it. I'm going to give this a go wiki word or term. Uh, so it starts with user input dot value. But this go wiki term just does it with that thing. So now I can say go wiki Word. Now, I'm going to probably crash my browser because I'm going to be doing this over and over again. I should put something in that stops. But it'll actually just go back and do this whole sequence again. So let's see what happens. Hey, look at this. Hey! <laughs> A Wikipedia random article crawler. I need to stop. How do I stop it? Okay, let's at least figure out. Oh, good. At least I got an error. At some point, that's how I stopped it. Look how far I got. I got to the return of Saturn. So uh, somehow we got Femme Fatale, Made in America, each tier, from Rainbow South Korean Band. So I should at least probably do some type of protection here. I'm going to do something sort of silly, which I'm just going to say let counter equal zero. I should come up with a better way of doing this. And I'm going to say counter equals counter plus one. And if counter is greater than uh, 10, oh, it's less than 10, so only do this 10 times. And I'm just going to say uh, create div, just so it's a little less of all that space. And now, let's try this one more time. It did it 10 times, and it stopped. And in theory, I should be able to now, oh, the counter should get reset. Anytime changed. But you know what I'm going to do? Forget it. Let's, let's not have it do this. It's only going to be able to do it once. You got, this will be easily fixable. <laughs> so now I'm going to put something in here like unicorn. And, oh, so what happened there? Oh, whoops. Ah, 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 okay. Go wiki is the thing that starts it. Of course, of course. So I need another function. Start search. So I'm going to create a function called function start search. And that does go wiki user input dot value and also sets the counter equal to zero. There we go. Perfect. Now everything is done. So I can actually uh, do this, and I can change this to unicorn, and it'll give me crawl a bunch of random articles, and then I can give it um, uh, happy, and it will <laughs> crawl a bunch of random articles and end with music. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching this random Wikipedia article coding challenge thing. Uh, it required a lot. It required regular expressions. It requires of callbacks and low JSON and JSONP and how the Wiki API works, Wikipedia API. I hope, I hope you make something from this uh, and, and, and actually be more thoughtful and have a, an idea here of why you might want to crawl Wikipedia and make some kind of strange thing with it. So uh, share with me what you make and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so me, I am so me is uh, rightly complaining that I put all my functions inside setup, but you know, I'm just not worrying about this right now. They're all being hoisted because <laughs> they're not using let. Uh, don't worry about it, is me. All right. Um, let me look at my text messages. Let's see if I can do the custom shapes thing. Okay. Okay, meet there. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see. 
Okay, let me just check one thing. Uh, let's see if I can do this custom shapes thing, because I uh, and I'll be done by eight, because that's only going to be twenty minutes for sure. And I'm never going to do this again, where I go for hours and hours and hours. But I'm just checking something here on my phone. You can listen to this waiting music. Okay. Yeah. All right. All is well. And I should probably just do the custom shapes next week. Does anybody actually want to still keep watching this live stream? If you do, you're... I, I feel like I have to make enough videos to rightfully not include the simple harmonic motion challenge. <laughs> Okay, people are going to still watch. All right. I'm going to try to do this kind of quick. Oh, I love that I got Newsies the Musical in there. That's pretty awesome. Okay, let's see here. P5 manager is like the greatest thing ever. Uh, P5 generate dash B custom shapes. Did I, oh, did I put some VARs in there? Oh yeah. Well, at least when I publish the code, that'll get fixed. Actually, I kind of was happy with the way this like crazy example, I feel like there's a lot of possibilities from there. By the way, if I start having like the stream crash, <laughs> I mean, I might come back to say goodbye, but that'll be the last straw. When, didn't I start this three hours and 40 minutes ago? I did. I don't know that I've done a live stream and everyone's still saying, please do neural networks. It'll come. Why well, go watch, Siraj was here. He's got lots of videos on neural networks. You can watch those. <laughs> They're great. I watch them. That's why I learned a lot of this stuff. Okay. Close this, close this, close this. I haven't read any random numbers. Or I know what I want. Uh, um, programming design systems. Okay. <laughs> okay, Weekman points out that I have Selling England by the Pound, which is one of my favorite albums. I don't actually know that album, so I'm gonna have to check it out. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, what I have here is um, Rune Matson's Programming Design Systems book, which is excellent. I also have to do my physical therapy exercises. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been here for four hours. Oh, I forgot to say, there was an email I was supposed to send. I gotta send my, give myself a reminder of, shoot. I have too much, this is, I'm overwhelmed with stuff to do. Life is hard. Um, okay, I'm just sending myself a reminder by Genesis. Okay. 
This is a, by the way, this waiting music is awesomely long. Because I can, because I've been streaming for four hours, I can say things like awesomely now. It's a marathon. Um, next Friday, by the way, I'm going to do an Alexa skill and uh, classes in ES6. So I, I kind of have that planned, actually. So that's coming next Friday. All right. Uh, this is kind of like showing up. OK. All right. Here we go, everybody. Hello, Ukraine. What time is it in the Ukraine? <laughs> Everyone's saying, I re I'm sorry for all the people who are like, I'm making you stay awake. Go to sleep. Sleep is important. Oops. And you will certainly uh, wake up to be able to watch this. Uh, why do you do so much P5 and so little processing lately? That's a very valid question. Yeah, I kind of like the fact that I can just share this stuff on the web really easily. But um, I would like to do more stuff in processing. So you know, I'll try to think about that. OK. Mm, all right, here we go. Hello, um, this is a video tutorial about custom shapes. And I am showing you on this web page a much better explanation about custom shapes than I will give you. This is actually uh, Rune Matson's online book called Programming Design Systems. I think I might have referenced this before. It's got an excellent uh, chapter on color, uh, at Rune Matson on Twitter. Uh, Rune is amazing, does lots of really interesting stuff with graphic design and code for graphic design. And so this, uh, this web page really will walk you through the, this idea of how you can think about a shape as having different vertices. Again, this is not my work. This is Rune Madsen's work. But this is what I want to cover. What does this kind of code mean? And even better, like what are some things you can do with that? So I will um, let you, I'm going to link to this page. Um, you can just stop watching this video and click on it and read it. But if you want to keep watching, I'm going to kind of give you my own take on this sort of stuff. Um, okay, now there's a, so what I'm talking about is custom shapes. So whoops, <laughs> to click over here. What I'm talking about is custom shapes. So what do I mean by custom shapes? So you might be familiar with a rectangle, which looks like this, or perhaps a circle, also known as an ellipse, which looks like this. There is a line, which looks like this, and a point, which looks like this, and a triangle, which looks like this. And I think this might be everything. So there are a list of defined primitive shapes, primitive geometry, set kinds of polygons, set kinds of shapes that you can call with a function and draw in P5. But you might want to draw this shape because this is the most glorious shape ever drawn. Now, how is it? this is a terrible example. <laughs> Time out is going to disappear in a second. So this is going to, you can just do a magic edit point where this goes away. And while I erase this, Mathieu is going to be working overtime. I, get, I don't need to do a live stream next Friday because this is like five million hours long. OK, let's start with something simpler. What if I wanted to do this shape? So this shape is, we can think of it as a polygon, a shape with many sides. And a polygon can be defined by its vertices. The vertices being each of these points that connects the sides. And this is actually one, two, three, four, five. So actually, if you have a polygon with four arbitrary sides, like this, you can actually do this with the quad function. The quad function in P5, or processing, both of all this code is for processing or P5, allows you to specify four points. But what I want to do is make a custom shape. So the only way for me to do this, that I know of at least, is to use a function called begin shape. and use a function called n shape. So if I use these functions begin shape and n shape, what I can do is def in between begin and end, I can set any number of arbitrary vertices. So I can say vertex, vertex over and over again. Now I could do this if, if I were in processing, this will actually also work in 3D, and there's a P-shape object and all sorts of fancy stuff you can do. But I just want to look at it from the simple 2D lens, and we're going to do it in P5. Um, and so um, 
So this is the basic idea. Begin shape, and this indentation is unnecessary. I'm putting it there just sort of for visual effect, but this is the idea. Now, so let's take a look at that and make sure it works. So I'm gonna come over here and, oops, sorry everybody, that's the wrong window. I'm gonna say uh, begin shape. And I'm gonna say vertex. I'm just gonna make up some points. 150, vertex 220, <laughs> vertex 200, 100, uh, vertex 50. I'm not very good at picking numbers. I need my random number book. Vertex 25, 50. I have no idea what I've just done. I'm gonna say end shape and now I'm gonna hit refresh. And look, there it is. So in theory, that's my shape. Now I wasn't very thoughtful about the vertices and the order. The order does really matter. And we can see if I did something weird with the order because this shape can be filled or stroked in the same way that, um, by that I mean setting the outline color or the fill color. Um, so I could say uh, stroke 255 and fill, no fill, just to sort of see. No fill, fill, no fill, no fill, no fill for you. Uh, we can see, ah, yeah. So that's it. So look at that. So uh, maybe I didn't do anything too crazy. Those are all the points. Notice how you could, with no fill, you can actually think of this as a path. So it could be a shape that's filled and enclosed, or it could be a path. And incidentally, it, if I wanted to close it, right, I could say, oh, let me put the first point again. Now it's closed. But that's kind of silly, right? What actually I can do is just write the argument close in here. And now you can see it closed it automatically. But I'm going to take that out. Now one thing I should mention is there actually is other stuff that can go in here. Maybe I need to come back in a whole separate video to go through all those possibilities. But I can specify the kind of shape, like if I, there's something called a triangle strip, which will actually if I give it a whole bunch of points, it'll put a whole bunch of triangles in between all of those things. And I have a feeling that if I go to, I'm going to go to the processing documentation, because I know that'll come up, uh, begin shape processing. We can see a lot of those possibilities here, right? Lines. Uh, triangles, like now if I use those points, it's not one shape, but it's th every three vertices will make a separate triangle. Triangle strip will connect it with a bunch of triangles. Triangle fan, you could use quads, you can use, and I think I used this in like the Pearl and Noise terrain challenge and a bunch of my different coding challenges, but I'm going to be, in this video, I just want to keep things simple and I just want to uh, use uh, vertex. So there we go. So that's the idea. Now, um, there's two things that I want to mention here. Number one is what would be interesting for me to do is come up with an algorithm that sets all these vertices. You know, what's the point really of me manually setting these vertices? More likely, I might want to do something like, I'm going to do this really quickly. Like what if I were to say, for let a equal zero, a, and okay, so incidentally I'm using a for loop, so for some reason you watch this video before I used for loop, I have to go back and watch the loops video. I should probably just stop saying that. I'm going to say a is less than 360, a plus equals 10. And then what I'm going to do, and this is I'm going to use something called polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation. Ah, yeah, this is a little bit of an aside, but this is worth it. I don't know if this is worth doing. I'm going to say a let x equal, just to demonstrate the idea, uh, 100 times sine of a, let y equals 100 times cosine of a, uh, plus uh, 200, plus 200, and then I'm going to say vertex, and I have a reason why I'm doing this actually. I'm going to say vertex x, y. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, I got something crazy. Well, I said all these vertices all over the place. So what I'm actually doing is something called polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation. I uh, link to a video that goes over it in more detail. But basically, if I have this angle A, what I want is to just keep changing that angle A to set a whole bunch of vertices around a circle. And I can use cosine and sine trigonometry map to get all those points. And I'll link to a video that goes through that in more detail. But one of the reasons why this worked really weirdly is I didn't set the angle mode to degrees. Because I'm thinking about the full way around the circle is 360 degrees and it's using a radians, which is a different, by default, different form of measurement. So now we can see there it is. And I want to say uh, close. So now I want to, let me actually um, say let spacing equal 50. I'm going to have this be spacing. And we can see that's what I get. Now th what's interesting about this is I'm now going to put this into draw. And I can have 
spacing be variable. So I'm going to say spacing equals, and I just did this. Oh, I did this harmonic motion challenge. That was a disaster. I could have that value oscillate. Oh, let's do this. I'm off the beaten path. This is really just a tutorial about custom shapes. But I'm going to use a sine wave in it, which might be a bad idea, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to have a variable called t, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Let, 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 let me be more simple about this. Okay, let spacing equal map mouse x, which goes between zero and width, to between, um, what do I want the spacing to be? Like uh, five degrees and 100 degrees. So let's at least see this work. Whoa, oh, I forgot to draw the background in here. So let me put the background in draw. So you can see, right? I'm getting, I'm changing that angle, so I'm slowly increasing the resolution of the circle. So the point that I wanted to show this to you is not because this is some beautiful pattern that you should use, but the reason why you might use custom shapes and set vertices is actually to have an algorithm to find those vertices. So what if you wanted to make a bubble, a cloud? So I actually have a, com a coding train community project about making a cloud, which I'll also link to in here, which this could form the basis. I think I've done stuff with like a purling noise blob coding challenge at one point that this also relates to. So there's a lot of possibilities here. And what I was going to do was use a sine wave to have this feel like it's breathing it's back and forth, back and forth. So that's maybe an, uh, something that you should try as an exercise after this video. So um, what I want to do, I'm going to leave this here, but I'm going to comment this out again. And I want to just talk about one other thing. So here we go. Remember this weird shape that I created? This shape is a polygon that has a set of vertices. But in addition to vertex, there's actually something called curve vertex that I can call. Now there's also something called Bezier vertex. And Bezier vertex is a kind of curve vertex for a special kind of curve called a Bezier curve. And actually the Rune's custom shape page goes through that in detail. I'm going to save Bezier curves for like another video because I don't even know if I understand them <laughs> at this moment. So I have to go read Rune's excellent description and then come back to it. But curve vertex, what curve vertex does is it says, oh, instead of having like a hard edge here, let's try to curve around that edge. But here's the thing. I should probably make this a separate video, but I'm in this video, so you have to be watching all the way to the end of this video. Um, here's the thing that's tricky, and I'm, I'm gonna, uh, there's going to be some magic erasing in a sec that's going to happen here. So Mathieu, you can edit out this erasing, because uh, one of these days I'm going to figure out like a good way to erase. <laughs> that's not tissues. This is horrible what I'm doing today. Okay, back. So one of the trickiest things about working with curves is that you're going to suddenly discover when you use curve vertex, points just disappear. Why? So let's imagine that I have these three points. Oh, no. okay. Now I might say to myself, like, oh, of course, this is what I want the curve to be. Uh, time out. This wall is kind of wet, so I forgot that I sprayed water on it. So it doesn't work to draw on it if it's wet. Let's say that I have these three points. These three, maybe this marker died. Let me just wait. Wait, is it the marker or is it the, oh, the marker kind of got wet too. Okay, but if I use it, it's better. We're going to wonder what those circles are doing over there. Let's say I have these three points. Now we could look at this and we could say to ourselves, like, I kind of know what I meant. I want to draw this curve. But if you think about it more, there's actually no way for the computer to know how to draw this curve without more information. Because why couldn't it be like this? something. Uh, that's, that's a little bit weird. I, 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 let me try that again. Why couldn't it be like this? This would be a valid curve. And the difference is, how do I enter the curve? I've kind of done a poor job of drawing this, but I think the next thing I'm going to do is going to make it more clear. What if there was like a secret point right over here that said how to enter this curve? 
or the secret point was over here that set out the edge of the curve, and up here it would be over here, right? This is going to look different if there's... So curves require additional points that control the entry and exit of the curve. Do I, should I, should I, do I need to curve and like come down here, or do I need to curve and like end up over here? And so it can be really confusing, and, uh, but you have to be aware of this. So let's actually go and look at the code and see if we can make this work. And let me simplify things, actually. Let me actually make up some specific ver vertices. So I'm going to say vertex. Uh, um, what, what's the size of the window? It's 200, 200. So I'm going to say vertex uh, 10, 200, 150, and then uh, and let's actually make this 100, 200, and then 300, 200. Oh, and pff, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm putting it all in one line. Vertex, I don't know, can you see this bottom down here? I want three vertices. Okay, and now let's take a look at this. Oh, do I have close? I want to take out close. And I messed up the middle one. I want this to be at 200. So this is, those are my three vertices. So I want to make this a curve. So a couple things. One is let me just draw these points so we can see them. Uh, separately also, uh, 300, 200. I mean, this is very redundant what I'm doing, but uh, stroke weight four, and then stroke, whoops, then let's do stroke weight one. Okay, so I can see points there. So I'm gonna change this to curve vertex, and you're gonna see what I mean. Curve vertex, And I don't see anything anymore. <laughs> now, I should have done this with more than, I should do this with four points. So let's make this 150, 50, and uh, 250, like 60 or something. So you're gonna see, oh boy, let's, and that's also, my apologies, um, let's also put these as the actual points we're drawing. Um, and, where, where does this go? Whoops. Uh, what would I say? 150, I'm <laughs> 150, 50, and 250, 60. So you can see these points are actually controlling how this curve looks. And there could be many more points. It's just controlling the entry of the curve. So like, what if I made this point mouse x, mouse y? This is what I'm trying to demonstrate. Mouse x, took me a while to get to this, but mouse x, mouse y. And now I'm going to make that first point mouse x, mouse y. So you can see, as I move this around, it changes, let's zoom in a little bit more, it changes the entry to the curve. And actually, this is an interesting way to make something interactive. Like imagine if this oscillated up and down, it's almost like this wiggling string or something. So again, as you're building these custom shapes, the shape now is only those two points, right? If I were to say close, You know, oh, interestingly enough, it's like, ah, oh, look, it actually connected it all the way around to the first point. So the first point is controlling, whoa, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of a nice. So you can imagine creating some interesting animation by just, uh, wow, close really made the, interesting if you do close, this whole problem kind of goes away. I don't know if it's a problem, but it doesn't enter. It comes around to the end. So that's kind of interesting. I just discovered that now. So you can see the difference if I use close because uh, it adds the point. The, another thing that you can do often which is sort of the same thing, is I could duplicate the last point twice. So that's sort of like, I, that last point is also the control point for yourself. So you can see it's not changing, but I am including the first point twice. So I could do that also, like I could include the first point twice instead of mouse x, mouse y. And now I kind of have, whoops, whoops, I, that's not the first point. I could, uh, sorry, if there was a different first point, which was originally uh, 100, 200, right? So if I have that twice and get rid of mouse x, mouse y, this can also be a strategy. So it's kind of like just duplicate the first point and duplicate the last point, but you don't have as much control. I would need yet another point, right? Like this point, the mouse, <laughs> to control that. 
So you can see now I can control this with the mouse. So there's so many possibilities. I'm sorry that I kind of went off the deep end then with like messing around with this. But the point is, and also incidentally, I can mix curve vertex and vertex. Now let's see if we can make this more obvious. Or maybe that doesn't work. So I'm pretty sure you can do that in processing. I'm going to have to investigate if that works in P5 or not. But the idea being that I can mix some are curved, some are jagged. So to recap, custom shapes are shapes that you are polygons or paths that you define by a set of vertices. You can make you can you can have them be tiled by certain kinds of quad strips or triangle strips or that kind of thing. You can have curved vertices or regular vertices. Curved, if you have curved, you need to have control points for the curve and the reason for doing that is quite possibly more likely because you want to have something more dynamic. Oh, and look, I connected these in this weird, crazy way. So here's the like ending Frankenstein thing of this like weird <laughs> hard-coded thing and circle. So I hope you make what if you're interested, if you don't know what to make from this, take a look at the link to the cloud, community cloud uh, repository. I mean, you might be watching this a year in the future. Hopefully it'll still be there. Um, but this is a project that's happening in 2017 for processing day which is October 21st, 2017, uh, for the name tags at Processing Day. So if you're interested, contribute to that, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Okay, hold on. This is, someone mentioned Catmull ROM splines. So maybe this can be inserted in there, somehow. Something I want to mention actually before I, I wrap up with the computer is that you might be asking yourself like, well, what's the math that calculates this curve? Well, there are different kinds of mathematical functions to figure out how a curve goes between two different points. Uh, I mentioned a Bezier curve. There's a specific kind of Bezier function and it, it works pretty differently than this, but it, it is something you could look at. But this is actually known as a Catmull. This, this is using P5 and use the Catmull ROM spline, spline being kind of another word for curve. And it, these are people's names who came up with this algorithm. So I'll try to include a link to uh, the historical information about the Catmull ROM spline. And I, I apologize if I, I spelled that or said that wrong. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right. All right, everybody. I, Mathieu, maybe you can splice that little explanation in there or we could just leave it out. It doesn't really matter. Um, but like splice it, not at the very end, but like after I was there and then I do that and then I came here and wrapped up. All right, everybody, it is 8.05. This has been a four hour live stream. Catmull is a name, yes. Um, I, I don't think I can do anything else today. That Lisa Jew curve thing, I don't know if it can be made into a video. Uh, I don't really like it, remind me later. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Real Networks Now. Very funny, Alan. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this live stream. I'm pretty exhausted. I'll be back next Friday, even though now I feel like I did two live streams in one day and I could take next Friday off totally legitimately. Um, and, oh, people want to see, so I'm gonna release the trailer. So if people want to watch the trailer, should I just do that right now? I'm going to release it as soon as I turn off the live stream, I'll release the trailer. And then these will be edited and that sort of thing. I'm sorry, I really, I, I just, I just have to go. <laughs> Fast forward the song. Thank you everybody. Um, choo choo. 273, that was a random number for you. All my shtick I can't do it anymore, I'm exhausted, it's 8 o'clock, it's like my bedtime in 15 minutes. And um, I will release the trailer as soon as I shut off this live stream. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you next Friday on the coding train, probably around the same time, hopefully a little bit earlier because actually I have somewhere to be at 6 p.m. Eastern time next Friday. So I'm hoping maybe I'll start at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, uh, and this was upstream, live stream number 101 and I'm just, I don't have a better way of ending this. I guess I could play the trailer one more time at the end. Nah, nobody wants to see that. I'll just release it. You can watch it yourself, okay? Here we go, goodbye, good night, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, yes, I'm going to continue with machine learning. It's just going to be a while.